Welcome back. And it's our last day of Plone Conference 2021's regularly scheduled talks, but of course tomorrow we'll continue with open spaces and there will be the sprint on Saturday and Sunday. But right now with me is David Bain, a longtime Plone developer and contributor business owner from Jamaica. I remember meeting David for the first time in Washington, D.C. at the Plone Conference in 2008. And uh, I remember being uh, very impressed with David and his sharing of technologies and tips and methodologies uh, that he discovered himself and was happy to share, eager to share with the Plone community. And so today, again, in that same spirit, David is going to be talking to us about how to scratch your own itch and contribute to open source projects. Thank you, David. Take it away. Thank you for that introduction, Kim. So let's get started. Okay, so I get it. You, you're not confident in your coding skills. You're thinking you're going to embarrass yourself and you're participating in, you know, participating in public projects could be quite intimidating but you want to contribute to an open source project. <clears throat> and there must be a way, I mean, uh, how do you get started? What if there was a way to get involved that was sensitive to where you are on your own journey? Uh, maybe a way that didn't require you to be an expert to get involved you know, uh, that might be useful. And maybe you don't need to worry about embarrassing yourself. There, I mean, there are some approaches. Uh, there's the hackathons, maybe try to fix a small bug, uh, read an article to learn a little more about contributing to open source projects. But some of us need a little more structure. Uh, so I want to share with you something that's maybe a little more structured and I'll share an old example. This is, uh, this is not something that happened in the last you know, three years or anything like that. And maybe discuss how you might be able to do something similar. So if you're a newbie, you can pay attention. Uh, this should be helpful for you. Uh, sorry, I... Okay, great. <clears throat> so, let's get into this. My name is David Bain. I... I'm a business designer with lots of clone uh, roots and experience. I obsess about making things better and hopefully I'll help you to be better at contributing to open source projects. So this is really a story of what I did and how I did it, and then a little discussion afterwards. So let's start with the fact that you have strengths and you have interests and your new and that and those that combination of strengths and interests uh, make you you. And that's actually an important superpower. And so I want to encourage you to play to your strengths. So in, in my, for, my, for me, for example, I am bothered by whether stuff looks good or works properly. And so if I see something, I want to figure out, all right, how can we make that better? So let's start with what I did, just to set some context. This is sometime in 2014. 
you know, it's not a decade yet since the iPhone and we're still communicating on IRC. And I wanted an easier way to install Plone just to, for development and things like that. It turns out in 2013, Alex Clark wanted the same thing. So he started a project called Plock. Um, it's a bit of, uh, eventually it kind of evolved into a workaround uh, for people who might want to pip install uh, Plone. Uh, I, it never got to the point where we are now. For those who know, we can now pip install Plone. But it was a pretty good workaround at the time. Uh, the contributions that I made to the project, I helped to make it faster with uh, an approach of caching, having the cached version of packages extracted from the unified installer. I added a little bit of artwork and some documentation. So how did we, how did I go about uh, approaching this project? Well, the communication happened on IRC. Um, here is a screenshot from, I don't even remember which IRC client at the time. And uh, just some conversation between myself and Alex Clark to just talk about, you know, well, what could we do with this plot thing? Uh, so he, he had already had a Git repository. So I forked the Git repository and made my changes, added, you know, put together a little graphic so that it made it look a little more interesting. Uh, added the capability to uh, pull from the unified installer and have those eggs uh, added so that you don't have to do this one by one pull from PyPy. And I documented uh, some of it as well as documented my activities on my blog. So this was a weekend sprint um, sometime in October, 2014. And I documented the, the process so that other people could know what was happening. So that's how I did it. Let's distill that approach, kind of step back and look at it and see how we could repeat that for modern Plone. Maybe you're working with Volto, maybe you have experience with React and you want to take that and, and apply this approach to contributing and helping. So, I've come up with four important ingredients. Uh, you really want to understand a little bit about yourself and your strengths and decide how best you can contribute. Uh, try the software, um, fix the software and share what you're doing. So you want to be able to say, uh, what are my strengths? Maybe I'm stronger in squares than triangles. Uh, I'm learning circles and maybe this is an opportunity to use what I'm learning to contribute. Uh, well, go ahead. Just kind of have a feeling of where, you, where you'd be stronger and see if you can contribute there. Uh, and yeah, audit yourself. Uh, once you've done that, and this, these first two don't necessarily need to be in order, you have to be using the software. If you're not using the software, you won't have any itches to scratch because there won't be anything bothering you and you won't be saying, you know, this needs to be improved. So you definitely need to be using the software. Um, and while you're doing that, report back, go to community.plone.org and let people know what you're trying, get feedback, ask for help, you can even write an article about your first few hours with Plone. Uh, what was that like? 
And then um, if you have issues, you can report bugs. Uh, then you get to the level of fixing the software. Uh, it could be documentation that wasn't reading properly or it was inaccurate. Uh, maybe there's lack of documentation and you could document something. And by the way, you don't have to document it in the official documentation. At first, you could put it in a blog. You could do a blog post or even at community.plone.org. Uh, just reminding you, you won't be able to do this if you haven't been using the software. Share what you're doing. Uh, so once, once you've made a change or anything, blog about it. Uh, maybe do a presentation, a lightning talk, or even host a small event in your locality, just to kind of show people, this is what I've been trying. You know, Even if you're not hosting an event, present at an event and show people what you're doing. Won't be able to do this unless you've been using the software, of course. So I'd like to encourage you to take your next step. And I'm just reminding you of those steps. It involves getting a good understanding of yourself, trying the software, fixing the software. So if you haven't started using Plone, start. If you're a Plone user, but not a contributor, I'm sure you have an itch. Uh, just pitch in and start figuring out how you can fix it. And if you're doing stuff already, then share what you're doing. Finally, bring your unique superpower to the Plone community. Thank you. Uh, my name is David Bain, and you can get me at this address. And I just want to encourage everybody, take this opportunity and maybe borrow some of these ideas so you can start scratching your own itch. Thank you, David. It's always nice to see a distillation of how to approach an open source project like Plone or any other open source project, because I, I remember myself feeling a little bit lost, wondering how to, how to reach out to anybody, whether my contribution would be appreciated. And um, certainly in the Plone community, everyone's contributions are appreciated. We're always looking for new users, new comments, comments from new users and feedback. So thank you again, David, for putting us together this roadmap. Uh, we no. will be in the no Oko problem. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, we'll be in the Jitsi. That's that blue button below the video frame. Right. And David will be taking questions and your comments and suggestions. Thank you, David. Yes, please. I'm happy to answer.